phenomenon to be expressed on a racetrack. America's junkyards became racing's first speed shops. Worn-out coupes and sedans were reborn as sleek racing machines. Today, prefabricated parts have rendered junkyards obsolete, but it's fitting tonight's race takes place next door to one such early provider. The junkyard may be gone from racing, but the junkyard dogs live on. Tonight, there's a pit bull of them here, and they're all thirsty for victory in the Bud Shootout 97, live on Rush Hour. Born in the cornfields and lower 40s of rural America. Dirt Trackin', the cornerstone of racing. The early barnstormers put it all on the line to satisfy their thirst for speed. Now, their great-grandchildren carry the torch with the same spirit and thirst. 700 horsepower rips the earth. For one hour, nothing else matters. It'll raise the hair on the back of your neck. Rush hour on dirt, dirt. We are live at the D-shaped Dirt Demon, Brewerton Speedway, just outside Syracuse, New York, for the Bud Shootout 97. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Doug Logan. Welcome to Rush Hour. After three days up in Canada, the Skull Bandit Racing Super Dirt Series is set to charge right back into central New York here in Brewerton. Joining me is Dirt Motorsports Racing Analyst Gary Montgomery. And Gary, tonight, the Skull Bandit Racing Series and the Mighty Mod Squad get set to tackle the oldest short track in New York State. That's right, Doug. This place was built in 1947, the oldest built for stock car racing, the track that's still operational. It's had a number of surfaces, a number of promoters over the years, but it has remained essentially intact throughout all those years since 1947. Since 1971, 91, Harvey Fink took over, and the place has had a renewal, and it's really on a growth curve right now. Some great racing here. Now, what is so unusual about this track? Well, it's a very different shape. It's a D-shaped uh, racetrack, and not unlike Daytona, a little more popular perhaps, or well-known, we should say. The curve here is on the back straightaway as opposed to the front straightaway. That's only what part of it. The turns are very different. Turns one and two, very, very tight. Turns three and four, sweeping. It's a driver's racetrack. The lanes will change all night long, and uh, it's not a horsepower track. It's a matter of who can figure out which lane is faster and get his car working best. Very, very interesting racetrack. Now, even though it is very much a driver's track, sometime the track wins. Take a look at the videotape from an earlier heat race this evening and watch the black M1 of Jimmy Horton right here. Jimmy caught a rut going into turn one and he goes over one and three quarters times and uh, rolls back on his uh, roof to make it to one and a half. Air Horton, he's been out of the ballpark at Talladega and other places. He was not injured. They're uh, preparing a separate race car for the action here a little later on. But that is the kind of excitement you can expect right here this evening on Rush Hour. Well, despite the many challenges that this track has to offer, there is one individual who has dominated here for years. And he's standing by in the pits with our cowboy Paul Small. Make no mistake, this is Barefoot Bob McCready's house. Here at Brewerton, as long as they've been running big block modifieds, there's only been one track champion, the man who drives a skinny drug Syracuse frame, car number nine. Bob, you've been quoted as saying this is probably the truest driver's racetrack there is on the dirt circuit. Well, it, it appears to be. I like it. You know, when you're comfortable somewhere, you, you know, you always feel like it's a driver's racetrack, but uh, it's a tough little track, and uh, the last couple of years, the competition's gotten stiffer and stiffer and stiffer, and it's just a tough, tough track. Well, what's the key to winning races here? You've won uh, 30 of them coming into tonight. Well, you need a, you need a really good race car and some brakes early on in a race because there are only 35 laps, and we've got guys here that, that are equal to us in the cars and talent. And, uh, if you don't get there first, it's going to be a long night. You might be third. We've had a lot of thirds and seconds here this year just because we weren't there before the other guys. A regular distance here is 35 laps. Tonight it's 97. How much will the track change during that time? It's going to change. It's going to change a lot. The grooves are going to move around. You're going to see guys move from the top to the bottom to the middle. It really moves here. And, uh, it's uh, one of those tracks you have to really stay on top of. You have to rely on the pit crew to keep an eye on the other guys where they're running and an eye on lap times and all those things. It's a it's a complicated race, 100 lapper, to stay competitive through the whole thing. But you may have more laps on this racetrack than any other driver here. Well, I got a lot of laps here. I got a lot of laps on 81, but it'll really make a lot of difference. These guys are all pros, and uh, 
It's just you're not going to blow them off. You know, we hope to be in there and hope to be competitive and hope to have a shot at it. Barefoot Bob has two wins at Brewerton this year. He's hoping to pull the hat trick tonight. Well, you know, Gary, Bob is so soft-spoken, but how loudly do these numbers speak? 81 career wins here out of his 250 of his career. 30 of those coming in the last four seasons. Five track championships consecutive for the last three years. Uh, very, very uh, fast uh, driver on a great racetrack. The Brewmaster, we call him the Barefoot Wonder, but he's also the Brewmaster. Well, he's something special. We'll be watching him. He'll be up front in this uh, field of 30 cars for our Skull Bandit Racing Super Dirt Series event just moments away. Well, a new addition to our Rush Hour Live broadcast is the introduction of our Internet Question of the Week. At the beginning of each telecast, we'll be telling viewers at home where to turn on the Dirt homepage to find a question related to the host track and an upcoming event. Right now, fire up your computer and log on to Dirt Motorsports, www.dirtmotorsports.com. Click on the television selection and find tonight's Question of the Week. Follow the instructions will announce the winner at the end of tonight's show with the official rush hour on dirt t-shirt awarded to the first person correctly answering our question of the week and dial us up look at this this is transaurus and it is devouring a car the jurassic era here in the speedway uh, a monster fire breathing uh Transaurus, I guess is what they call that thing, and he is devouring a red car of some sort. He's just it was a car. Just gobbling it up. That's that's the new. How about a little touch of the old? Speedo the clown, the only traveling speedway clown in the country. He is on hand here this evening. He racks up some 30,000 miles a year, entertaining race fans nationwide. A lot of fun here tonight at Brewerton Speedway. And of course, the main event is looming. We are live at Brewerton Speedway, and our coverage of the Bud Shootout 97 will continue on the Dirt Motorsports Television Network. Rush Hour on Dirt is brought to you in part by Easy Care Extended Service Contracts, Top Oil Engine Treatment, Budweiser, the King of Beer, Mid-State Communications, Hoosier Racing Tires, Sunoco A-Plus Mini Market, and by CarQuest Auto Parts. Welcome to the pros, CarQuest. Making it to the pros takes a certain level of excellence. The experience to get the job done right and a reputation for quality. Like top quality champion spark plugs from CarQuest, Champion gets your engine started fast and running its best. No matter what you drive, Champion keeps you fired up and in the game. So for the best possible performance, install what the pros install. CarQuest, welcome to the pros. Think you're tough? Yeah! Think you're tough? Yes, sir! Are you tough? Ah! Tough enough to take the Tough Oil Challenge? Only Tough Oil's in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's most efficient lubricant. Tough Oil reduces the surface friction in your car's engine, so you keep going and going. The competition? They're left in their own smoke. Are you up to the Tough Oil Challenge? Nothing is tougher than Tough Oil. There's only one fishing lure proven to catch all these fish and virtually every species of game fish in North America. It's the banjo minnow, the world's first and only genetic response fishing lure. Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Dance. But I'm here to tell you, the banjo minnow is truly the most exciting thing I've seen in a mighty long time. The banjo minnow will outfish every fishing lure in existence today. We had made a fishing lure that actually made fish bite even if they weren't hungry. And it works. It's amazing, totally amazing. I've not missed a fish on the banjo minnow. Just is amazing. It's just unbelievable. Have your credit card ready and call now to order the complete 110-piece banjo fishing system. You get 24 banjo minnows in three different sizes and four colors. Banjo weedless bait hooks, counterbalance jigs, and much, much more. All yours for only $29.95. For faster service, have your credit card ready and call the number on your screen right now. This bait is phenomenal. We are live in central New York, Brewerton Speedway, for the Bud Shootout 97 on Rush Hour. 
Doug Logan along with Gary Montgomery. The Skull Bandit Racing Super Dirt Series stormed through the French-speaking province of Quebec this week, and Paul Small has all the action. Monday night, race eight of the Skull Bandit Racing Super Dirt Series was contested at Autodrome Drummond in Quebec. Jumpin' Jack Johnson and the Duchess 87 desperately needing a win to improve his standings in the points took the lead at the drop of the green and spent the first half of the race fighting with the Camara Slate car number 26 of Dave Camara. Meanwhile, coming from the 26th starting position in the field, the current point leader, Brett Hearn, in the red and white Budweiser car number three. Brett spent the first half of the race chasing his way up to the front of the field and then in the last third caught and cashed Camara for the second spot. He set sail after race leader Jack Johnson, but didn't have enough to catch Jumpin' Jack. It was win number one for Jumpin' Jack on the Skull Bandit Racing Trail over Hearn, Camara, Jimmy Horton, Billy Decker, and David A. Bear driving Steve Payne's car. Last night, a packed house at Autodrome Granby, just 10 minutes west of Montreal, for round nine of the Skull Bandit Racing Series. They were treated to an incredible contest. Doug Hoffman in the blockbuster video number one took the lead on lap one. But coming through the field quickly, the Hurricane Steve Payne and the wins extend number one, the car he regularly campaigns in Quebec. While Payne was charging through the field, two other drivers were again passing a lot of cars. As a matter of fact, Jimmy Horton in the M1 and Danny Johnson in the Freightliner 6 probably passed more cars than anybody this entire swing through Quebec. And how about this performance by Tim McCready in the Jeff Gordon's Power Outlet number 24? Check out the power move on the current point leader, Brett Hearn, in the Budweiser 3 on the outside of turns one and two. It came down to a four-car race with 15 laps to go. Hoffman heavily pressured by Payne, McCready, and Hearn. Then with seven laps left, the Hurricane went for the power move in the Payne lane on the outside of the racetrack, making the pass for the lead. The Quebec band showed their appreciation and mass. Payne held off Hoffman over the final seven circuits to claim the win at the track he is the defending champion of. He was followed by Hoffman, Tim McCready, Jimmy Horton, then Billy Decker, and Danny Johnson. Well, Jack Johnson has made Brewerton Speedway one of his home tracks this season, but he obviously felt right at home Monday night in Drummondville. Jumpin' Jack is standing by now with our cowboy, Paul Small. Jumpin' Jack Johnson, a fantastic victory for you at Auto Drum Drummond, and I'm sure that one felt real, real good. Yeah, it really did feel good. We've been working real hard trying to get this car going, and finally we hit on a little something up there in Canada, and hopefully it sticks with us right now. Hopefully you can carry that momentum here tonight. After all, this is one of your home racetracks. Well, we're going to need momentum here tonight. Got a lot of good race cars. We drew a bad starting spot, so it's going to be hard to get up through the pack, I'm sure. Jumpin' Jack Johnson has been a consistent finisher, but so far, not a winner here, at least not yet, at the D-shaped Dirt Demon, Doug. Well, it could happen tonight. Let's take a look at the Skull Bandit Racing Super Dirt Series points after nine events. We're at the midway point. Brett Hearn is the leader. He took the lead a couple of weeks ago. Bob McCready second. Danny Johnson, who was the early leader in the series. Jimmy Horton, Jack Johnson, Alan Johnson, who's yet to win, but very, very strong. Steve Payne, a winner last night. Doug Hoffman, the defending champion of this series. Jeff Hensler, yet to win. Timmy McCready and Billy Decker are tied for 10th. Tim Fuller rounds out the top 12. Well, you know, coming off the Independence Day weekend, we had uh, just all kinds of great racing excitement that we enjoyed throughout Central New York, all around the dirt circuit. And, uh, well, let's take a look at the action. Here's Cowboys Racing Roundup. This year has certainly been a roller coaster ride for Barefoot Bob McCready. Case in point, Sunday at Cayuga County. McGritty comes down for a restart in the Kinney Drugstore's number nine when Steve Payne does a Claude Lemieux and elbows him down into the infield. McCready slides the car to a stop. He's clearly not happy and confronts Payne by driving in front of him on the racetrack. That results in the two of them making contact and both of them getting black flag. Serious damage to McCready's car and to his point standing. Now when the checkers fell, Joe Plasek was the winner, but Alan Johnson was that close when the checker flag came out. Friday night, BlackRock had a prolonged Syracuse qualifier for 358. The last 20 laps, side by side, Todd Burley outside, Dr. J, Danny Johnson on the inside. Dr. J wins the race. Burley gets the guaranteed starting spot for Syracuse. Round up. It's twice nice. Sure is if your name happens to be Jamie Mills in the 30 car. Mills charged through the field Saturday at Delaware International for his second win in a row. And Randy Fortin, the number four, got the win Saturday at Susky, his first since 1995. Got five grand for it, too. 
Alan Johnson scored another victory at the Land of Legends Saturday night. That closes him up to Joe Plazic at Barefoot Bob in the points race. And Pistol Pete is back, and so is his pack. Pete Bignell has recovered from the surgery he had last fall. He won at Merrittville Saturday night. Rich Ricky Jr., the winner at Lebanon Valley on their high banks, but Fred the Jet still flies the top of the point standings there. Can Am Speedway Saturday night. Jeff Sykes gets his first win of the year in 358 action. Get your upsets right here. Paul Weaver wins Saturday at the Bridgeport Speedway. And the wild child, Billy Gray, does the wild thing in victory lane after his first career modified win at Fonda. You'll flip over these next couple of things. First chef, Tim McCready, delivers the pineapple upside down kick to you. And we have an exclusive proof that dwarf crossing still does exist in the state of Delaware. Well, we hope you enjoyed a weekly feature on Rush Hour Cowboys Racing Roundup. We're getting set for the Budweiser Shootout 97. Our Rush Hour banner contest continues to grow in popularity at all of our Rush Hour shows. Tonight's winner, the family of race driver Scott Prentiss. Congratulations to the Prentiss family for this beautiful banner. They're now eligible for the year-end grand prize of $1,000. We'll be right back to the D-shaped Dirt Demon, Brewerton Speedway. This is the Dirt Motorsports Television Network. Rush Hour on Dirt. Dirt. The two cars touch. Oh, my goodness. Three wide on a turn four. Danny Johnson is second, and the battle rages down the back stretch. Don McCready goes up over the first. Plus Mini Market, your 24-hour ticket to convenience. Now every 10 ounce, every 16 ounce, and every 20 ounce cup of Colombian coffee is just 79 cents at participating A Plus and A Plus Express stores, where one price fits all. Over 3,000 items. A Plus Mini Market, 24-hour convenience, your store, plus more. This team's for real. Hit the pedal to the metal. There's more Thunder Road Thursday coming your way. Exclusively on Sports Channel. We are live at Brewerton Speedway, just outside Syracuse, New York, for the Bud Shootout 97 on Rush Hour. Let's take a look at our race analysis as the starting grid is on the front straightaway here at Brewerton. 97 laps of racing. Caution laps will count after 50 laps, but uh, not the last three. We will finish under green. First 30,000, winner's share, 6,000. 31 cars will start this race. Our track, there's our weather. It's uh, 70 degrees, a beautiful day here. Low humidity, winds uh, not really a factor at all. Clear skies, cool temperatures, a beautiful moon, a great night here in Brewerton. Yeah, we're looking forward to a great night of racing. Now, how about that track description? Well, it's a one-third mile. We talked about it at the front of the show. It's D-shaped with a big curve on the back straightaway. The front straightaway is 300 feet. Then the back straightaway, that curve takes up 60 feet, so you get 360 there, 14 degrees of banking. Very exciting racetrack. And we're looking forward to it. Now, as for the track condition, let's go down trackside and Paul Small. 
This track is definitely living up to its name of the D-shaped dirt team. And look at how soft this clay is here on the front stretch. Now, by comparison, the inside of the corners are hard, but the top is tacky. And there's a killer cushion, a big berm of dirt that's built up on the outside. You couldn't ask for better racing conditions here tonight at Brewerton. Now, next to me, the current point leader on the Skull Bandit Racing Super Dirt Series, Brett Hernan, the Budweiser number three. He hasn't done too well. And as a matter of fact, tonight, he's starting to clear back in the 19th starting position. But the last time we ran a major event here at Brewerton as part of Super Dirt Week in October. This guy won the race, Doug. Yeah, well, he's got his work cut out for him. Though I want to know, is that, that look like a good pen that uh, Cowboy had stuck in the yeah, clay? Yeah, I just gave it to him, and he's already using it to dig up the clay. I don't know about <laughs> that. Well, the cars are firing. And as they pull away, they will be led by a rush hour pace truck provided by Sam Dell Dodge. Sam Dell Dodge, Dakota. Sam Dale Dodge, downtown Syracuse, New York. Let's take a look at that beautiful pace truck. And now, let's key on the starting grid for tonight's Bud Shootout 97. On the pole, the number 33 of veteran Jeff Hetzler. And outside, number 31, Steve Botcher. Second row on the inside is the Dr. Danny Johnson out of Rochester. Alongside is the Barefoot Wonder from Watertown, Bob McCready. Behind that power pack row, we have the 47 of Scott Prentice and the 60 of Bill Gill. Row four on the inside, Jaron Springs, New York driver, Bobby Barron in the 111. Timmy McCready, the second generation driver, is in the number 24. He'll start in position number eight. Row five, the winningest driver of the dirt modified circuit, Alan Johnson, and outside him, the defending skull champion, Doug Hoffman. Row six on the inside, 48-year-old driver, Kenny Brightbill on a sinking, sprint, sinking springs, passing into the tabloid graphics car, Billy Decker from Franklin, New York is alongside. Row seven, Jimmy Phelps, and Steve the Hurricane Payne. Row number eight on the inside, jumping Jack Johnson out of Dwaynesburg and the Duchess overhead doors number 87, the Camara Slate Expressive, David Camara is alongside. Out of Rochester, Gil Tag in the number 32 and from nearby Clay, New York, the 83 of Tommy Sears. Row 10 on the inside, current point leader, Brett the Jet out of Vernon, New Jersey, the Budweiser number three, Vic Coffey from Leicester, New York is alongside in the Sweeteners Plus number 32. Row 11 always in the hunt, the 56 of Pat Ward and outside the five of Jeff Sykes. Row number 12 on the inside, Gordy Button out of Chittenango, New York. First time he's been in this car all season long. And Frank Cozy from Wingap, Pennsylvania in the uh, Grasso Trucking R24 is alongside. Let's go on to row 13, the 27 of Ray Bliss Jr. He won a race here not too long ago. And Sean Dunneth outside row 13, the number 10. Row number 14 on the inside is Steve Polzizer. He's from here in Brewerton. Dana Wagner's alongside their pair of regulars here at this racetrack. All right, inside row 15, driving the number 94. That's Tim McCready's big block. Tim Fuller, who had mechanical problems in the heat. Not enough time to repair that car, so he's driving Tim McCready's number 94. The 115 of Kenny Tremont is outside row 15. And in the back of the pack, we've got the Roger, uh, there's uh, Kenny Tremont, the Roger Phelps is alongside. We had uh, the one M1 of Jimmy Horton also in the field. So that is our starting lineup, and there is that backup of uh, Horton. So yes, we will have 32 cars in the starting lineup here. And uh, well, the white flag is out. We are about half a lap away from going racing here. And look at the huge throng on hand. I'll tell you, we're having great, great turnouts for these spectacular shows. And now we eye starter and flagger Chip Burdick as the field is into turn four. Heads down the front straightaway. The green flag is out and the butt shootout 97 is on. Hetzler inside, Botcher on the outside. Botcher gets the wheel in front. He has the lead down the back stretch. McCready is in third, bidding for second. Young Stevie Botcher out of Lahighton, Pennsylvania, grabs the lead in car 31, the Zellers mobile car. And then right behind him is that good battle for the number two spot, McCready on the outside. Hetzler down on the bottom. McCready has the groove on the outside. He'll take the number two spot away from Hetzler as they race down the back straight. Great driving in massive traffic here at the D-shaped Dirt Demon. Everybody through for lap one, now through lap two. Scotty Brennis uh, taking over the number four spot there. You see Doug Hoffman making a move on the outside as he moves around Barron in the 111. Hoffman in the red number one. That's the battle for the number nine spot. Here comes Alan Johnson on the inside of the Bobard car number 12B. So there's a all bunched up there and running the 9 and 10. There's a good look on our speed camera in the front straightaway. Now into turn one goes the field. There's Doug Hoffman in the number one. We're looking at Alan Johnson and Bobby Varon, and you had an indication there how they are immediately two and three wide here. We talked.
talked at the head of the program how there'd be fast lanes that'd be changing all night long, right? And I don't know if they can figure it out yet, but they're all over this racetrack looking for uh, racing room. There is the battle for the number eight spot. Here we go back up to the front of the pack. Botcher leads, but McCready is on the move. McCready takes over two. Botcher in the Zellers Mobile number 31. It's a TO Pro chassis car. McCready drives a Troyer bus. Botcher, 35 years of age, running well on the race course. And in that low groove, Bob McCready. But Botcher is your early race leader. Botcher is a uh, quality assurance manager, graduate of Penn State University, loves the race, and uh, he's taking a little time off here in the middle of the week uh, to find his way up to Brewton. Love to make all the races, can't do that. But right now, here's a battle for the sixth spot as uh, Hoffman on the outside of Scotty Prentice. Prentice uh, goes back to seven. Hoffman comes up to the number six spot. The blockbuster video, Troyer Bus, Doug Hoffman out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, the 1996 Goal Racing Series champion. And we're back to the front of the pack. Botcher in the 31. McCready goes down low. McCready a bit for the lead. Can't get it. Botcher, longtime Orange County regular, now a Bridgeport steady competitor, continues to hold that lead. But Bob McCready, Mr. Everything here, the brewmaster, is bidding for the lead. Yeah, they're bidding for the lead in traffic already. We're only on lap number nine, and these guys have caught the back of the pack. This is going to be a tight race all night long, Doug. We talked about the short track configuration. There's Steve Holzeiser about to go a lap down in car number 88. But Botcher has the preferred line. Again, he can pick his pick and choose his lanes as he works his way through the lap cars. And the car just in front, you saw the 115 of Kenny Cremont, who had a problem added as a guaranteed starter. But just in front of the leaders. And they're weaving their way through traffic already. We are 11 three. laps into this race. And there was a great three-wide shot going into turn one. Tremont way up on top. McCready way down on the bottom. And poor Stevie Botcher in the middle. And McCready may have him. McCready has taken over the lead out of turn four down the front straight away. And Botcher got hung up behind Tremont. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, again, I think a reflection on uh, home track advantage. And uh, McCready knows his way around. We've got caution on the speedway. The yellow flag is flying. We're on lap number 13. And as uh, you mentioned, there are the first 50 laps. The caution will not count. And that's about the problem. But uh, McCready is our race leader. We're under yellow, lap number 13. It looks like we may have... Well, I'm looking for a vehicle in turn four. I don't see a car down there in turn four. We may have just debris on the track, but we'll check it out as we continue. Yeah, it looks like we might have some de debris on the track as we have a yellow flag caution period here at Brewerton Speedway. Some sheet metal in the front stretch. Yeah, I think that's a belly pan off of one of the cars. Now, that's a problem. If a guy loses a belly pan, that'll put mud up into the uh, cockpit of the car. It can cause a problem with mud getting in the pedals. Uh, but driver's face or whatever. That could be a problem for whoever lost the, the belly band. Here's a look at Bob McCready, who in 95 won the Skull season opener right here at Brewerton, then went on to win the series championship. He's got victories in more than 50 different tracks. And he is the defending champion of this particular race. He's, as you said, Mr. Everything. Uh, he's uh, all the championships. Let's take a look at the pass for the lead. This is where McCready got Botcher, and you see the 115 of Kenny Tremont in the outside groove, and Botcher had to back off the pedal just a little bit, and Bob McCready took over and grabbed the lead. We should point out that McCready started this race outside row two last year. He started from the last starting position and won the event. Master of going faster. Here we have green flag, and he gets to practice again with a clean racetrack now. No lap cars, and there won't be a problem for a number of laps. And we have a tangle up back into turn number four. Uh, Bliss is involved, and he is stopped on the racetrack, so we have an immediate caution. Ray Bliss and Dana Wagner got together as they uh, got on the gas coming out of turn number four. And Ray Bliss, you see all the damage to his car. Well, that did not happen as a result of this incident. That happened in the consolation earlier, been up front and rear. All right, so Ray Bliss, who won here a couple of Fridays ago, is having his trouble here this evening. And I tell you, that car, that car needs some major rehauling from a body standpoint. It got dented pretty good. Bob McCready is the leader of our Budweiser Shootout 97. We will continue with our coverage after this timeout. This is the Dirt Motorsports Television Network. Rush Hour on Dirt. Whether your car 
is Strawberry Pearl Coat, Santa Fe Silver, or Candy Apple Red. A PPG certified collision repair shop uses premium paint and a palette of over 100,000 colors to precisely match your car's color, whether it's champagne metallic, emerald green,